It's the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, and for once, I'm determined to follow tradition, come rain or shine, to sow at least some of my seed potatoes today. In this video, I will show you exactly how I do that. Welcome to Everly London Garden. I'm sowing two main crop seed potato varieties in this double 1.2 meter by 0.8 meter raised bed. The two varieties are one of my favourites, pink fur apple, and a new to me variety, Caledonian rose. I selected two seeds from each pack for planting in containers, leaving eight of each variety for the raised bed. I have noticed that growing pink fur apples in containers doesn't produce as large a crop as they do in more open ground. Now I'm growing them in the raised bed, hoping the more open space will be less restricted on the developing tubers. Pink fur apple is one of my favourites. They have a nutty flavour and make lovely potato salads. The slight disadvantage is their knobbly structure which can be a pain to peel but if you scrub them well you can eat the skins which helps to add to the delicious taste and provide extra fibre to your diet. I'm using my compost scoop which I purchased many moons ago. It's great for planting potatoes in raised beds as I can easily and quickly shift the soil to create a planting home for the potatoes. Last year, I stocked up on potato fertiliser and oil codes, which I have since discovered has increased in price. I find that this fertiliser helps produce good crops and, until recently, reasonable value for money. I am gradually reducing my use of store-bought fertiliser in favour of developing my own to save costs and move towards more companion planting. Even though the soil in the raised bed is of good quality and full of nutrients, I still like to add half a handful of fertiliser to each planting hole to help with the potatoes growth and development. I make a planting hole as deep as the scoop for two reasons. It should provide enough depth for the seed to develop and hopefully it's too deep for the squirrels, cats and foxes to dig them up. Checking that the potato was the right way up, with all the growth points at the top, I planted the potato in the cavity, on top of the fertiliser, and then backfilled it with soil. Then I repeated the process for the Caledonian Road seed potatoes. I'm trying this variety for the first time this year, as I've heard good things. They are an all-rounded potato. Apparently, they are great boiled, roasted, chipped, baked and mashed. They are of a more uniform round shape than the pink fur apples which means they should be easier to peel. Here you can see my compost scoop again which has proved to be a more versatile tool than I imagined. If you don't have a compost scoop consider adding one to your garden essentials toolkit. I know many gardeners remove all but one or two of the growth points on the seed potatoes to increase the size of the individual tubers. I haven't noticed any difference, however it's good to experiment to discover what works best for you. Try leaving half of your seed potatoes alone, remove the extra growth points from the other half and see if the results differ. Now for that bag of compost I showed earlier. It's 40 litres of peat-free multi-purpose medium which I poured on top. The reasons are threefold. I'm hoping that when the time comes to earthing up, I wouldn't have to use as much compost and it will make digging up my prized potatoes that much harder for those furry pests I mentioned before. I will also add more plants to make the raised beds an even more efficient and productive growing space. Later this month, when all threats of frost and potato-seeking pests have gone, 
I will plant my remaining shallots on top. Anions are great companion plants, helping to deter many potato damaging pests. To ensure my potatoes have a chance to grow, I'm covering the bed with repurposed wire greenhouse shelving, covering those with compost sacks, and then finally covering those with as many planted containers as I can find. It's a temporary measure in place for a maximum of two weeks to prevent the soil from impacting underneath. I'm determined to give the sea potatoes every chance. So far, it seems to be working. In my next video, I will show how I planted the spare pink fir apple and Caledonia rose sea potatoes in containers. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to know which potato varieties I'm growing this year, watch this video. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye for now.